David says, hi, Robert. I'm a tenor, and I can attack high notes like D5. Pretty impressive, David. But I think I have a problem momentarily. I can't hold notes easily like an A4 sharp. All right. B flat, A sharp 4. So David can sing the, the D5, but he has a problem on the note below to be B flat or A sharp. Just pushing, and also I'm not having, I have, don't have the extra experience. What do you think? I'm going to get better in time when I'm going to know my body, how it works, or my voice is not to hold high notes, just attack them. What can you say about them? A lot of these people, English isn't their first language, so the, so the, the grammar is a little funky. All right, so here we go. David, the question in the question is this. David is saying, hey, Rob, on D5, the super high note, I can do it all day long. It's easy for me. But below, below that note, uh, B flat, A sharp, it's not easy. It, I, I, you know, it, it breaks. I get instability issues. Well, that's odd. That doesn't make sense to me. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. The first thing you need to understand David, the, and you guys, the first most important thing you need to understand, if you feel like, well, super high screaming notes are easy, but the ones below it are more difficult, that doesn't make any sense. Understand this. Understand this. Just because it's a super high note, that doesn't make it the most difficult. Okay? This is important. Let it sink in. Own it. Don't forget it. All right? Just because a note is super, super high, it does not mean that it's the most difficult note to sing. It doesn't mean that it's the most difficult note to train. And any good coach will tell you that or should tell you that. I'm sure if you ask the question to Draven, he'd say the same thing. If you ask Kevin Richards, he'd say the same thing. If you ask Marie, she'd tell you that too. Coaches understand this and students need to understand it too. All right? So David, you need to you need to remove this confusion and notion that oh because it's super high and screamy that somehow that makes it the mo that makes it more difficult. Typically not. All right. Um, super high screamy notes are usually ah, there might be some exceptions uh, depend, again depending on the individual and the vowel and different things that are happening. But as a general rule, the super high notes are typically a lot more diff or a lot more easier. Excuse me than notes that are a little bit lower. Notes around A4, for example, which, which you're talking about, it's A sharp, A sharp, A, A, A sharp, around A4, and for men, for men, around A4 and around E4, okay? Those are bridges. Those are register bridges. Those are places where the resonance has to shift. And when the resonance has to shift, the articulators and the musculature and the tongue and all kinds of fancy movements have to happen inside to make the resonance shift smooth. Add to that uh, motor skills and strength building. You have to train, all right, to build stability around E4 and A4. So the reason A4 is more difficult for you than the D5 is because at D5, there isn't a major formant shift. There isn't a major registration. You've long already done it down at A4, and you're just like sort of going into whistle note land, all right? Which for you is a little bit easier. Anytime we have to bridge registration, we have to shift formants, okay? For men, namely around E, somewhere around E4 and A4, those are the most difficult spots. Okay, so that's totally normal. It's a completely normal experience, David. Um, so what do you do about it? Train, train, damp and release onsets, integrated, integrated training routines with damp and release onsets, pulling up with melodic fists and attacking in with uh, vowels, attack and release onsets. Study, damp and release onsets and attack and release onsets. 
go out to the training page and scroll down to the integrated training routines, strength building routines, and I believe it's number three. Okay, so training page, uh, phase uh, module three, training page, module three, strength building workout number three. Write this down. Has damp and release onsets, plosive onsets, pulling melodic fists to the top, and then in with glottal attacks back down. That's an integrated training routine for belting. Do that through E and through A over and over again, okay, and you'll get stronger. Now, also, David, it's important that your vowel and your resonance is correct as well. You have to manage two things here, the physiology of singing, okay, and you have to manage the acoustics as well, both of them, all right? So the workout that I gave you will help build the physiology, those damp and release onsets and those glottal attacks. That's the physiology piece. Now I'll give you a quick tip here, David. To get your A4 to stabilize, write this down. Add a little bit more ah, ah, as in ants in my pants, okay? I got ants in my pants. A little bit more ah, ah-ishness, a little bit ah-ishness, just a touch. Just a pinch at A4. So what I'm talking about is formant tuning here, and they are very delicate, just like tuning a guitar string. We add a little bit of ah-ishness to the sound color, all right, that you're singing approximately around A, B flat, and I'll guarantee you, David, that that A4 will open up for you, okay? So work the musculature and the motor skills and, and be sure to tune your formant properly. Get a little bit of attishness up there and watch what happens. All right? Okay. Most likely a formant tuning issue. More ants in your pants on A4. More ants in your pants. That was easy. All right. Sim.